All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sanko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you. 200 smart contracts on Cardano, but there's a catch. So one third party explorer puts the number of time locked Cardano smart contracts over 2000. However, it's a little misleading. It's hard to say exactly what's going to be coming out soon here. A lot of these contracts are time locked or a lot of them are just scripts and they counted it because from the Mary era uh, for tokens that were going to be coming out months and months later. Um, so it's hard to say exactly how much is going to be coming out. Although I did get you a couple examples of uh, some contracts and or tokens that will be coming out on Cardano soon. More than 200 contracts have been listed on the Cardano blockchain explorer following the Alonzo upgrade on Monday. As of now, the 200 smart contracts listed are in time lock and cannot be used by the developers until they are released. The Versal app currently puts the number of smart contracts readying to be launched at more than 2,200. So it's a bit confusing. Uh, the Plutus smart contracts uh, are probably what the end user is actually going to interact with. <clears throat> Res, it says down here, 2,443, including time lock scripts, Mary era scripts to mint tokens, NFT, NFTs, which was a while ago. So uh, it's likely that it's not really actually uh, over 2,000 smart contracts that are going to be immediately launched on Cardano. It's more likely going to be around this number, what you're actually going to interact with. Um, so uh, Charles Hoskinson, uh, founder of Cardano, said on Friday that the decentralized finance space is up for grabs now that the Cardano smart, uh, supports smart contracts. Hoskins had said that the winners of what he called the second wave of DeFi were going to have liquidity and interoptability, uh, the ability to move multi-chain and cost predictability. We need governance. We need certification. We need insurance. We need regulation on these things. Metadata identity. At the same time, you need to decentralize he said, adding, the way we constructed Cardano was for that second wave, for low fees and all that stuff. Uh, so there's a bit of confusion out there. I went to the Cardano Reddit. People are very confused. Some people are saying 40,000 smart contracts. Some people are saying 2,200. This third party website says well over 2,400, uh, but it's more likely just a much lower number than that. Right now, the Pluto smart contract scripts are at 19, and that's probably what you're going to interact with. These other scripts could just be old scripts. They may never even get used, and a lot of them were just to mint tokens uh, at a later date. So one of the first things uh, going to be coming to Cardano, or at least so they claim, is Cardax. It's going to be the first DEX on Cardano. You can see here it's kind of set up to look uh, almost a, a precisely like a MetaMask or pretty much uh, every other DEX out there. Uh, it says in Cardano, anyone can become a liquidity provider and start earning CDX tokens. So nothing new here. Uh, with this. Now, of course, you're going to be able to transact all the new Cardano tokens. And I have said for a while that the first few tokens and, and DeFi platforms on Cardano are likely to be pretty lucrative as there's a lot of hype, of course, behind Cardano. It sort of has a cult following, if you will. And we've been waiting a long time for any kind of smart contract. So the first things that people can uh, throw their money at, they're going to likely. Is it going to be uh, game changing? Maybe. Uh, likely not though. Uh, Cardo uh, Cardex is the first DEX on Cardano and it's no different from any other DEX. You're providing liquidity, you're getting their tokens, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but again, no reason to say that it will not be lucrative. In fact, quite the opposite likely it will be as a lot of people will be piling into the new system to try it, to try the new DEXs, to try new tokens and see all of the fees that are going to occur, etc. Another one uh, is just a token. Uh, it's greed is good. Greed token. Uh, so greed is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed uh, clarifies. Uh, so basically greed token is a reflection token. And if you don't know what reflection tokens are, uh, they have become somewhat popular lately, particularly on the Binance Smart Chain. And it's basically just some token. And if you hold it in your MetaMask wallet or wherever, uh, you 
all of the other transactions on uh, the system are taxed. So basically Cardano, uh, launching on Cardano with 20% of each transaction. So it's basically a 20% tax. So if you buy $100 of this, you get 80 of it. Uh, if there was absolutely fine liquidity and very basically no fees, but that's an ideal situation. So you're going to get $80 instead of a hundred. When you go to sell it, it's a 20% transaction. Those are reflection tokens and the rewards 13% goes back to the holders in ADA this time. Normally it's always like, uh, Binance coin or the token itself uh, or something along those lines. 3% goes to liquidity pool, 2% goes to marketing, 1% will buy greed tokens back, 1% goes to buy our pups tokens so we can reward them back to holders and airdrops. Fair enough, right? Uh, but it, it's going to be a reflection token um, and there's really nothing special about these. If you get in super early on these, you can make some money and maybe perhaps this one will if, if this like comes out first and you basically have nothing else to buy on the Cardano blockchain. Like if this is one of the few tokens out there at the time, it is not released yet. You can't even click buy or anything like that. There's no chart. Uh, there is a white paper, but it's basically as green as you're looking at right here. And it's just a big wall of text. Uh, I urge the developers of this token to please reconsider uh, your white paper and that nasty green text. Uh, <clears throat> but it basically says the same thing. Again, you just get taxed at 20% of every transaction you do. So basically your goal in this is, is, is almost like a pyramid and that you get in as early as possible. And then as everybody else is buying in after you, uh, you get 13% of all of those transactions back to you as ADA, which again, can be lucrative, but get into these late as they're going down in price typically doesn't work as well. So moving on here, experts say Ripple will win SEC lawsuit, which might propel XRP to new all-time highs, which I have been saying for like uh, th this many years, I think now at least. I've been talking about this since the Ripple lawsuit began that Ripple will likely win this because Bitcoin and Ethereum did. And as long as they fight it properly, um, they should win. At the very least, they might have to just settle and pay some millions of back pay that they should have paid if they had registered themselves, etc. Some kind of thing like that. Uh, and then once that's said, there's something like 30 exchanges out there that delisted or completely suspended uh, XRP. Um, and those will all get released and everybody will be able to begin pouring their XRP back on there or just buying XRP on those. Uh, there may be a slight sell-off uh, just because XRP is significantly higher than what it was when the SEC lawsuit began. I think it was like 30 or 20 cents or something like that, somewhere in that region. Um, but there's going to be a big floodgates of, of liquidity and volume that will be opened up. Uh, as well as Grayscale, for example, had some um, who knows billions of dollars worth of XRP. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the number offhand anymore, but it was a significant millions of XRP or something like that, millions of dollars worth of it. Um, and they liquidated that uh, on the SEC FUD. So maybe those investment companies will actually bring them back and investors will pour money back into it. So I think, yes, there's going to be a rally afterwards. The SEC has filed a motion to protect documents requested by, uh, by Ripple from public viewing. The XRP Army proponents and supporters of XRP have unearthed one of 13 entries that count as internal SEC documents in the case. A speech draft of William Hinman, former SEC Director of, Cooperation, uh, of Corporation Finance, is enclosed as an entry in an email submitted for review and comment by SEC officials that believes that in, uh, that Hinman's speech came from a collection of, of, of people's opinions. Hinman's speech is considered uh, critical to the outcome of the case since he declared that Ether is not a security in June of 2018. Back then, Hinman argued that he had warned Ripple about XRP and advised the company to halt its sales. Uh, on the contrary, when asked about Hinman's statement, Gary Gensler, the current SEC chair, refused to comment while the ongoing investigation of the world's second largest crypto exchange, Coinbase, and the firm behind the sixth largest crypto XRP, the XRP Army, asked why the SEC is picking winners and losers in the industry. And the argument dates back to Hinman's 2018 speech and the SEC's uh, proceedings against Ripple since December 2020. So the SEC, in case you guys didn't know exactly what that is, uh, the SEC declared Bitcoin 
and Ethereum, both not securities. So essentially just currency. So they have to tax it as a currency or just treat it as a currency. It's totally fair game. Uh, they're picking on XRP because, and Ripple in general, I suppose, more so, uh, that they are selling securities that the way that they actually went about becoming into existence and the fact that they were paying people in XRP for marketing, et cetera, et cetera, that all of it adds up to it being a security. And that's why many exchanges delisted or suspended it. Uh, Grayscale and some other firms completely removed it uh, from their investment uh, portion of the company, I suppose. And XRP went down from like 30 cents to like 20 cents during it. And now it's significantly higher. Uh, we even got to nearly $2 a while back uh, with the SEC lawsuit going on. So after this is over, the floodgates will open. So I agree with the article. I agree particularly with the title of the article that uh, it would propel it to new highs. Um, of course, it would also depend if are we in a savage bear market when the SEC lawsuit ends. And if they win uh, on, on the assumption that R Ripple wins, uh, then it might be hard to say. Everybody's trying to sell their assets because everything's going down in price. But if we're if we're sideways or we're in a reasonable bullish market, I think, yes, XRP will definitely uh, shoot through the roof. Again, there's just going to be so many floodgates that open back up um, that uh, it's going to be hard for it to go down. Although, again, I just want to say that maybe when the floodgates open up after this is over, that XRP might dip a bit at first. Because if you think about it, a lot of people might may still be holding XRP um, and they had bought it at 20 or 30 cents. And when they come out, it's it's nearly $2 or it's a dollar or a dollar 50 or whatever the price is at the time. That's pretty big gains. And a lot of people might take that opportunity to finally sell and take some of their fiat. Uh, but again, I think the overall buying pressure um, and just the fact that investors are no longer scared that they are buying a security will allow them to buy back in. But moving on to more El Salvador news. So yesterday we talked about El Salvador and how they were burning ATM, sort of protesting against the president um, for basically having Bitcoin in the country, which is very strange. There's many other reasons, of course, too, austerity and whatnot, uh, some people feel. Uh, I've heard uh, things that, uh, that there's the president has like an 86% approval rating and that these may be paid protests. Uh, and I've heard things that uh, everybody is just suffering at the same time. So it's really hard to say, uh, but El Salvador did accept Bitcoin. Uh, as a currency in, in the country. So it's taxed as such or untaxed as such, depending on how you use it. Um, and uh, some businesses businesses are, are compelled to accept it uh, in the same way that if you go to the United States and you hand somebody a dollar, they, they, they have to accept it. Um, otherwise, I, I suppose they can turn your business away, but that's what they accept. It, it is legal currency. So El Salvador government to be investigated over Bitcoin purchases and crypto ATMs. So this these this this FUD leads me to believe that something somewhere is attacking El Salvador to make a example out of them so that numerous other countries don't accept Bitcoin as a legal tender. Uh, because I think it was Uruguay and Paraguay were, ex were, were thinking about it. Um, and there were some other South American countries. So it's a huge South American movement or Latin American movement. Um, talking about maybe pushing legislation through to do what El Salvador did. And perhaps there's a few people at the top that might be a little bit scared about that. I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't p put it past, um, you know, intelligence agencies or top people uh, to do this, considering this has happened many, many times in the past, just sans Bitcoin. Uh, so El Salvador's Court of Accounts will investigate a complaint about the government purchase of Bitcoin, as well as the government's process for building crypto ATMs. According to Reuters, the Court of Accounts, which oversees the country's public spending, said I received a complaint on September 10th from a human rights and transparency group in El Salvador called Cristosol. Uh, having admitted uh, the complaint, will be proceeded to carry out the legal analysis report and, in a timely manner, forward such report to the General Audit Coordination, the Court of Accounts reportedly said. Um, Cristosol uh, asked for an audit of the government's Bitcoin purchases as well as a review of how the government financed and carried out the construction of crypto ATMs in the country. So that's a good question. 
uh, in in my opinion. Like, how did they, you know, it, it's not necessarily a malicious thing to ask this question. Um, hey, how did you finance these crypto ATMs? Was it just taxes? Were those taxes meant to go out to the people? Were those taxes meant to fix our roads? What what was the plan here? Like, where did, where did these come from? Considering Bitcoin ATMs are something like, you know, six, seven, eight thousand dollars per ATM, um, it is a lot of money, and they put them all over the country. Well, El Salvador is a pretty small country. That still is quite a bit of money. Um, so it's a it's it's a legitimate question to ask the government. Hey, where did the money come from? Uh, what's the transparency here? How much Bitcoin did you buy? Where did that money come from? Th these are all just legitimate questions. So I I do have to give it to the Cristal Sol. Um, for for asking a legitimate question. However, uh, it is strange that there's these riots uh, over Bitcoin ATMs, etc., and this austerity when you know it, it's supposed to be helping the people. So, what is going on here? Are these paid riots, or these people just genuinely don't know what Bitcoin is and how it could be good for them, or you know, or is there savage austerity in the country that no that not many people are talking about? So this is not the first time President Bukels, I have no idea how to sell that guy's name, I don't care. Bitcoin Project has raised ire among human rights activists in and outside of El Salvador. See, that's a little shady. Why would it raise ire? Bitcoin? Hmm. Uh, President Bukel uh, first announced El Salvador's Bitcoin embrace during this year's Bitcoin conference. And on September 7th, Bitcoin was officially recognized. For starters, the country's Bitcoin legislation compels businesses to accept Bitcoin as payment when offered. Now, every economic agent must accept Bitcoin as payment when offered to uh, him by whoever acquires a good or service. The law reads. So this viewed by many as a coercive law has led to protests, protests and more protests on the streets of El Salvador. What's more, the government has accused of intimidating, silencing and harassing its most vocal critics. The government has harassed big business and small business alike. They've sent government agents to inspect the businesses to ensure that they are following labor regulations because C-level executives have said negative things about the Bitcoin law. So uh, there, there are two sides to this. Is the government being too crazy with this Bitcoin and forcing people to use it? Why not just accept it as legal tender and just say, hey, you can accept it if you want. You're a free business. Just go ahead and accept it if you want. Um, we're, but we're going to give it out to everybody and we're going to encourage it. Um, that would be nice to not force people to to accept it. Um, but at the same time, riots over it, which is a little strange. The very first country on planet Earth to accept Bitcoin um, as legal tender uh, and sort of, you know, encourage its citizens to get away from the nasty falling U.S. dollar and get to the rising Bitcoin, which you could argue is a good thing. Um, and... That's a little strange to protest over that, to like literally go out and actually ride over that, not just like carry signs and be like, we don't want your Bitcoin, uh, but like like burn ATMs and smash things up. Very, very shady, in my opinion. PayPal finally opens its crypto doors to all UK customers. So a little bit of uh, bullish news here. Prominent payments firm PayPal, although I don't like PayPal so much. Uh, I don't think anybody does really. And I don't really like the fact that they, you know, use Bitcoin. Like I want them to have Bitcoin and using it. Uh, but the way they do it is not so good that you can't really send it to yourself. Although they are sort of building that up and building personal wallets for people and the ability to buy different currencies and actually send them to people and receive them. So fair enough. But Still bullish news. Enter the cryptoverse and change the market forever. The emergence of the crypto industry was identified by this major platform and it made a timely move with its entrance into the market. Timely? Eh, they were a little late on it, but fair enough. With an intention of further sprucing up its crypto game, it decided to expand its digital assets around the globe. Back in August, PayPal had announced its venturing into the UK. While the payments firm had already well-established base all around the world, it was just starting to incorporate crypto into the system. And today, the firm finally revealed that it had opened its doors to crypto services to all eligible customers of the UK. And with this announcement, the payments giant noted that UK customers would be able to buy, sell, as well as hold an array of crypto. The service was originally expected to go live in the last week of August itself. So a little late. Uh, so you could buy, sell, and hold crypto. So that's... That's okay. I mean, you can use your PayPal bucks to buy Bitcoin and hodl it and then sell it at a later date. But that's all you can really do with PayPal so much. They are 
um, trying to innovate and actually be able to send it, which innovation, just being able to send it is innovation, but uh, all right, and be able to receive it and and um, accept it um, and also be able to like buy it and then send it from your wallet to a different wallet outside of PayPal. And currently, I don't believe you can do that, but I, I have read articles on my on my channel here uh, that they are working on different ways to use the crypto and that I argued that, the, you know, the, the easiest way for them to get into crypto was simply just to have buy people buy and sell it and just have it on, on PayPal and not have to worry about sending or receiving it at all, just so they don't have to deal with the customer complaints or this, that, or the other thing or any errors. Um, and then they would go from there. And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, so moving on to coin market cap, still sort of trading sideways, 3,400 uh, Ethereum still, 47,000 Bitcoin still, nothing too crazy happening. Uh, there's really not much movement with any coin. Uh, Shiba, uh, that listing on uh, Coinbase has pumped it significantly here. We'll go back to the seven day uh, and it went up quite a bit, but now back on its way down. Um, so probably not lasting very much longer uh, with its Coinbase listing. And I'm not really sure why Coinbase listed this coin with all of the drama behind it, but nobody knows why Coinbase does anything. But that's all I have for you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And as usual, I'll see you guys next time.